Welcome to The Sandbox with Justin Peters, connecting you to the ideas and tools to improve your life. Now let's go. Hello and welcome into The Sandbox. I'm your host, Justin Peters, and today I do not have a guest introduction for you. I actually decided to do something a little bit different with this episode and deliver to you more of a monologue style. It's just going to be me and you here. Uh, I don't have a guest. I I love my guest interviews, um, but I've realized that not everybody likes long format, you know, 45 minutes to 60 minute interview style. And um, I really wanted to deliver something that was a little bit more concise and digestible in an episode. So I'm not entirely sure how often uh, these types of episodes are going to come out. I right now plan to deliver them maybe every 10 episodes or so so you should see a solo podcast episode from me about every two months um but i i really wanted to um hand off just a couple deliverables um a few actionable items on a very specific type of um topic and today's topic is is something that i'm really passionate about um something that i realized is is so important over the last couple years and that's skill acquisition. So, uh, I, you know, first maybe I should start by what do I mean by skill acquisition? And uh, what I mean by that is is intentional learning. It's formal learning. It could be a hobby like uh, sewing. It could be a new sport like snowboarding, or it could even be a professional skill like web development. But uh, I believe that intentionally going out and um, practicing and learning new skills to either further yourself from a personal or professional uh, angle is something that everybody should do. I I don't know, um, this is a bold statement, but I'm not really sure that you can live a meaningful life if you're not actively pursuing uh, learning new skills. So um, why I I believe that and, and why I say that statement is that I think such an important part of, you know, living the human experience, you know, after, you know, uh, you you start filling Maslow's hierarchy of needs, you know, if if you have safety and security in terms of food and shelter and and you have meaningful relationships, uh, you know, the next biggest thing I think is, is always having a challenge and, and stimulating yourself. It's, it's, uh, both from your, your career, but, but, you know, just things that you have interest in and that you have curiosity and wonder for. Uh, I think the biggest joys, the biggest wins come from those certain things. So, uh, you know, why, why, I think you should perf- uh, why I think you should pursue learning new skills. Obviously, on the professional side, um, the biggest reason it will provide you more opportunity. It opens doors for you. You know, if, if, if you're looking at your, your current job, maybe you just want to become better at that. You want to grow either horizontally or vertically, you want to seek promotions or you want to gain bigger responsibilities within inside your current role. Uh, it could allow you to change your career. Maybe you're someone who's been thinking about aligning your career in a more specific area, but you can't do that without maybe setting yourself up for success and, and learning some of the skills that are required in those areas. Um, you know, simply for myself here, I, I recently changed careers. I uh, was in the insurance industry. I, I was in sales and um, uh, I moved into recruiting. And there's a lot of transferable skills within there, uh, making connections and trust and um, understanding a lot of the human aspects. But but I really didn't have a good understanding or grasp for, uh, for example, some of the, the HR specific uh, things that I needed to learn that would be required for me in terms of recruiting and onboarding people. So that's something that I focused on over a couple months, actively learning through lynda.com, uh, some of the state laws and the specific things required uh, and the do's and the don'ts with inside the recruiting space. So that pursuing those skills allowed me to shine in my job interview and allowed me to more easily change my careers. And finally, if you want to branch out and do your own thing, Uh, Learning new skills is important. Maybe you uh, are in a nine-to-five job and you love photography so much and and you want to make it your full-time business. Uh, Learning the skills, the editing skills or the shooting skills uh, to branch out and start to make money so you can support yourself financially, uh, either through freelancing or side hustle or full-blown business, uh, is an important thing to do. 
or maybe you just want to teach something on the side. You know, you want to understand something specifically for uh, the desire to go out and, and teach other people some of the same things and, and, and hopefully make a little bit of money in the same time. But uh, let's talk about it. Let, let, let's try to move away from the professional side right now and talk about it more why I believe that you should be pursuing skills, uh, learning skills for yourself and yourself only. The most obvious reason that I can think of is it just makes you a more interesting person. Um, I don't know about you, but I love to understand people's hobbies and interests outside of just what they do to make money and what they do to, to go about life. Uh, one of the things that fascinates me the most is how do you spend your free time? Uh, do you play a sport? Um, do you have a, a, some kind of quote quote Pinterest hobby that you like to do? Uh, is there something that you're wildly fascinated, you know, it could be history or some kind of science specific topic, and that you spend a lot of that your time pursuing and understanding and building knowledge in that space? The second reason I can think about is it fights boredom and, and breaks up the monotony of life. You know, if if you're on autopilot, um, especially, you know, we're, we're, you know, I'm recording this September 2020, and uh, it's been about six months in uh, the COVID world and in quarantine, every day can feel like the same day. So what I did was went out and pursued some new skills and spent some of this extra time that I had uh, learning some things, and, and it really broke up what I felt like was some of the monotony of life. And, and there's things you... You, there's things that you have to do to go through the motions, you know, taking a shower or, you know, going to work out or, or cooking dinner. And, and, you know, a year from now, you might not remember some of those micro moments. Uh, but I am a big believer that, that you will remember some of those, you know, that specific moment when you learned how to do a kickflip on a skateboard or whenever you, uh, you know, picked up the camera for the first time and, and framed your picture the right way. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm struggling with the photography, but it's always top of mind because uh, with Gabby and, and photography, it's, it, it, it's something that I think about and I try to branch out on the creative side. But uh, I, I, I like pursuing skills solely for the fact that it gives you something else to do besides uh, go to work, come home, eat, sit down on your couch, and, and you know turn on Netflix or your, your favorite streaming service and then spend your evening uh, binge watching three hours of um, Avatar or whatever it may be even though I just I just uh, finished the uh, Avatar series and I, I, I loved it so I'm not hating on Avatar at all. <laughs> uh, third is it, it keeps your it keeps your brain active and this is important for uh, lots of reasons I mean from the health standpoint um, there's there's studies that link, learning new skills to, to fighting off something like dementia. Um, so, so for long-term health reasons, I think this is important. But, uh, but you know, they also talk about how learning one thing helps build brain matter and it helps you speed up your learning process, the learning speed for, for things in the future. I mean, I, I see this all the time just with something as specific as, as um, language learning. But, you know, learning your second language is probably got to be the hardest language you learn. Uh, and then you figure out how to learn languages and the third and the fourth and the fifth come easier. So I think it's important if, if you see yourself as a lifelong learner, you see yourself as someone who wants to grow and continue to, to, to uh, pursue skills, then learning one stacks on the next and, and it becomes easier and easier. And, and I see it on the other side, actually, too. Um, I didn't learn something new for, for quite some time or, or, or intentionally pursued something um, to learn on my own. You know, throughout college, I was just so busy between, you know, playing sports and working and, and doing schoolwork that I didn't go out and seek something for fun and learn something. So that first time out of college, whenever I decided that, you know, I wanted to go and, and learn how to rock climb, it, it felt clunky. And I realized, you know, I hadn't learned a new sport or really even a new skill in general for quite some time but now since then I've learned five or six different subsets of skills and everyone feels like it comes a little bit easier so I think that's important but but here are some of my favorite reasons why I think everybody should pursue skill acquisitions first is that uh, it's a reminder of the beginners mindset 
And, and what is the beginner's mindset? So the beginner's mindset in simple terms is letting go or forgetting about everything you think you know about a certain subject or, or um, a certain skill and viewing it as completely fresh, you know, with no expertise, experience, or opinions. And the big piece to this is having the comfortability with the inside beginner's mindset to be starting at the bottom. Um, once again, ask yourself, when is the last time that I, I tried something that I felt completely out of my comfort zone on? I, I, I really encourage you guys to reflect on, on that question because I think it's such a powerful thing to do, um, continuously do, is be putting yourself in the beginner's mindset and be working on something or reminding yourself that you are capable of learning from the ground up. And to have the confidence to go out there and look like a fool, uh, trying something new and, and putting yourself out there and being seen as, as starting small on something, I think is so important uh, for, for you know your own sanity, to be honest. I, I think uh, learning new skills helps you develop some of that confidence that, that will spill over to so many other areas of your life. And, and you'll realize that, hey, I'm not comfortable at this right now, um, but I am capable of learning anything or adapting to anything. Therefore, you know, a challenge doesn't seem so overwhelming. Uh, it's simply that it's a challenge, something that's fun uh, that you're excited for. So I, I think uh, pursuing skills and, and developing that beginner's mindset is is an important aspect. Second is it it just makes you happier. You know, learning something from the ground. And, and hitting some of those first early milestones or those latter milestones as well gives you a sense of accomplishment and pride. Uh, and through that, once again, you're building confidence. You know, there's nothing uh, like, you know, working on a certain specific sub skill, uh, like I was mentioning that kickflip earlier, and then hitting it and landing it. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll tangent on, on something, but uh, I've been recently longing. Uh, learning how to the longboard and looking, uh, seeing, knowing what I was like when I first stepped on that board to what I am now, uh, I couldn't, I couldn't push, I couldn't carve, I couldn't do anything. Uh, but now I, I really enjoy whipping around um, my apartment complex, and and it's so much fun. And I'm excited now. I'm trying to learn some certain skills or, or you know, a, a couple tricks on on my my longboard. So. You know, same with rock climbing. I love rock climbing simply for the reason that there's certain grades um, on certain routes. So it, it starts, um, you know, it, it will give you maybe a one and then you move to a two or a three. I'm, I'm simplifying this for everybody that doesn't know rock climbing, but I really like it because you see yourself progress along the uh, difficulty scale. And, you know, hitting my first V2 or hitting my first V3 was a moment that I still remember uh, and and uh, that gave me such a rush of accomplishment and, and pride. So uh, I really think that translates to a much happier life and another important reason why I think you should pursue new skills. And then finally, I just think spending time learning something new is a really great use of your recreation time. I, was, I, I touched on this when I was talking about monotony of your life, but... Uh, you're gonna enjoy it more if you spend some of your downtime, some of your free time, pursuing an interest that you have. You know, learning something and and you know, gaining some of that accomplishment and that pride and that confidence. You know, I and and, and don't get me wrong. I think everybody should also spend some time turned off. You know, quote quote turned off. Um, some time to relax. You know, it could be watching your favorite TV show or listening to some music or just hanging out. Uh, with your significant other or your friends, I think that is so important to recharge your batteries. But we've we've all been in that moment where maybe we've been sitting on the couch a little bit too long, and that we're, you know, I I always see it in the moments when I'm bored with actually watching my favorite TV show at the time. That's when I know I hit rock bottom, and that I need to go out and do something else. You know, if I and if I don't have that like desire or, or um, I, I don't have something that comes to mind of what I want to do, then that's a good indicator for me that, hey, maybe I should look at a list of things that I always wanted to learn and try to start learning one of those things. So, which brings me to 
my suggestions on how to do just that. You know, how do you go about um, picking something and, and actually learning something from the ground up? Once again, I, I think this might be a little overwhelming for some people that maybe haven't intentionally tried to learn something in quite some time, especially maybe a skill that seems overwhelming like sewing or Photoshop or, uh, or, or you know, rock climbing, whatever it may be. That might seem like a, holy cow, where do I start? Well, how do I do this? So um, if you want to learn something for professional reasons, more power to you. I think that's, that's perfect. You know, if you want to learn coding or web development or whatever, because you, you want to get a career, you want to realign your career or, or move up the, the ladder, uh, I think that's great. But my suggestion whenever, if you, if you haven't learned something in a while, is to pick something that you want to learn for 100% fun. Something that you're like, man, I've always wanted to do X, Y, Z. If you don't have a good idea what that might be, um, I created a, a Google document. I uh, put a bunch of ideas on that Google document. Just flip through it and, and pick something. Pick one of those things. You can find that Google document, the link to it, in the show notes. Uh, you can always find the show notes at justinpeters.co. That's C-O. Uh, I put all my show notes up there for each episode. So just find this episode uh, within the Sandbox pod, podcast tab and uh, click on that and you'll, you'll find the show notes there and you'll, you'll see the link to the Google document down there. Uh, but, but just decide something. Don't, don't overthink it. Pick something that you had some interest in and, and just start. Just have a place to start with. Um, my suggestion from there is to make a minimum commitment. You know, commit, my personal opinion, 45 minutes a week to practicing and learning that skill. And, and, and when I say 45 minutes a week, I mean literally track your time. You know, pull out your phone, start the timer on your phone, and focus 100% of your, you know, put 100% of your focus into that practice, that practice session. And then whenever you're done with that practice session, uh, record the amount of minutes and the date and the time. You know, it could be on a scratch sheet of paper or uh, you could start uh, an Excel document or whatever it may be. Track that time and just make sure that you're, you're hitting roughly 45 minutes a week. I'd rather see you, you know, practice uh, a couple times a week for 10 to 20 minutes versus, you know, two hours every three weeks. I, I just think that's a dangerous game to play. Uh, and you're gonna lose interest or focus on it versus if I touched it every other day, uh, you feel like you're continuously kind of moving along in the chain. So start small, three days a week, 15 minutes. But but you can also consider some some of the inconvenience that might come with starting small. You know, if there's a, a, a long setup process or you have to drive somewhere, maybe you just spend once a week, 45 minutes. You know, if you gotta drive to a rock climbing site or um, I also learned slack lining. So, you know, going to the park and setting up the slack line and everything that goes in it could be a 20, 25 minute process for me. So um, I, I sometimes consider some of the friction that might be in the way of me trying to actually practice that skill. So through that recording, I suggest doing this 45 minutes uh, a week for 10 weeks, 10 weeks. That's roughly two months, a little more than two months, maybe. And, um, after that 10 weeks, you know, hopefully you're you're somewhere around the six to eight hours. And I think 10 weeks, 45 minutes, because whenever I've been learning skills, just about any skill that I, I started learning, I picked up guitar, slacklining, rock climbing, um, I've done some of the podcasting space, some of these skills that I'm trying to learn, I start to see some early wins that that really register and give me some of that that accomplishment that I'm talking about and which which drives me to continue the process around the eight the six to eight hour range. That's when I, I okay, uh, <laughs> I can now stand and push on the um, longboard and I don't feel like I'm a complete idiot whenever I'm, I'm trying to go down the street on it. <laughs> uh, it's like, I, I, it starts to feel a little bit of fun and it's not so frustrating. So 45 minutes a week for 10 weeks. And then moving forward, once you get to that point, you know, you can reflect and ask yourself, do I want to continue to con to intentionally learn and practice more? Or do I wanna just maybe move to a more informal um, uh, practice with this? You know, maybe it's something that I wasn't, I'm not actually crazy about. I got into it and you know, I didn't like it as much as I thought I'd like it. Or I learned enough of it and I just wanted to be um, in the elementary proficient space with it. Cool, awesome. 
Um, but if you're going to do that and, and, and let go of this kind of, this skill that you're learning at that time, then, then go out and, and pick something new and keep doing this until you, you find some things and, and you'll see skills stack. And I think the learning process, as I was talking about, will get easier. And then if you are someone who wants to become more intentional about learning, I think that six to eight hour, eight hour mark is a good time to start thinking about how to specifically learn. You know, it's going out and, uh, you know, finding a learning program. It's setting certain milestones for yourself. It's, it's understanding the sub skills with inside that skill that you might need to be, that you might need to spend a little bit more time on. Um, but, but, you know, early on, I don't suggest doing any of that um, because the structure and, and the, the milestones might actually uh, inhibit you from progressing. You might get down on yourself for that. So, so I, I think that's something to consider. And um, maybe a few other things to look out for whenever you're, you're learning a new skill. Um, some things that are probably going to come up, and I, I think these are worth stating. First is you're probably going to be overwhelmed where to start, especially if you're picking something that you have no adjacent, uh, no adjacent experience in. You know, if you're a skateboarder and you want to ha- how to longboard, you, you might understand what you need to do in order to longboard. But if you are, you know, someone like myself, if I went out and I wanted to learn how to paint, um, I have no experience painting. I my color palette is about ten colors. If it's not on the rainbow scale, I probably uh, don't know. I can't tell you what that color is. So if I was to go out and learn how to paint, uh, I'd be very overwhelmed from the start. So a couple su- quick suggestions on that. First of all, your keystrokes away from I think learning anything. You know, Google and YouTube will be your best friend starting out, and and that's that's usually where I start. And and very s- simplistically, might say uh, how to learn how to start painting, and you will find articles or videos. Uh, you will find certain teachers online that that you can digest information from and start. You know, just just go to YouTube, find a five minute video, and then practice exactly how they're telling you to practice. And you'll see, okay, that works for me or it doesn't. And then you'll start to understand, okay, um, I, I don't know how to do X, Y, Z within that skill. And then you can Google that and you keep building from there. My second suggestion is to find a friend. You, if you know someone who is uh, already has this skill and is proficient in the skill, they're probably going to be a good resource for you. And I would simply go to them and ask them, hey, I really learn how to, I really want to learn how to paint. Um, can you like? Can you can you be my informal mentor in this? Can I ask you some questions? Could you maybe teach me how to do it? <laughs> Simply that I I would I would start there um, and and you know find your uh, you know find your person to help you get through. And then the last suggestion, if if you have some financial resources, uh, and, and usually it's it's not even a lot, and and I I love to commit a little bit of money to learning a new skill because. I'm somebody that that takes spending money really seriously. So if I spend money on something, I know I, I really want to get my money's worth out of it. So uh, my my third suggestion would be taking a course or uh, hiring a coach. You know, going online and finding the right course for you. There's a lot of great websites out there uh, that have specific types of um, coursework that that you can purchase, or you can go out and hire a coach for just about anything. And I think this is a great suggestion for someone who might be in that early elementary stage. You know, you got to that eight to 10 hour mark, and now you're really serious about wanting to learn something. You could probably hire a coach a couple hours a week to get you to the next level really, really quickly. So, and and as I mentioned, it gives some skin in the game, and then you take that pursuit a lot more seriously. Another thing to look out for, and this might be the greatest enemy you're going to to face inside of skill acquisition is boredom. You know, there is a lot of monotony into learning a new skill. There's there's sometimes you just have to go through the process of the reps, you know, 50, 100 times in order to learn something. You know, it's it's uh, you know, learning guitar, it's playing some of the same strokes or songs hundreds of times. I, I still can't change chords and and um, learning how to go from chord to chord is simply just muscle memory and it's me 
every, you know, three times a week for 15 minutes, practicing moving from cord to cord. So to combat that, I suggest making that minimum commitment and staying to it. You know, really, really, really commit to that 45 minutes a week for 10 weeks and just say, hey, I'm not going to move off of that goal until the 10 weeks are up. I think that will help combat the boredom aspect of it and get you to a place in that skill set that, that you're seeing some of those early wins and it's becoming fun and it's something that, that you know, you look forward to going, you know, getting off of work and going to do instead of a chore that you have to go through. And then finally, this is the last thing that I wanted to tell you or to be weary about with inside of skill acquisition. And that is the fear of being seen starting small. All of us want to, to feel like we fit in. We don't want to be seen as, as you know, standing out, at least in, in the negative sense. And, and we don't want to be, we don't want to look stupid or, or feel novice. You know, this is, uh, I see this often in, in the sports space of it. You know, it's um, from anybody, you know, that isn't necessarily comfortable going into a gym and looking dumb for a little while, you know, using some of the machines or doing some of the exercises that you've never done before, or, you know, um, you know, grabbing a surfboard and going out and uh, trying to catch a wave while there might be 30 or 40 people on the beach looking at you uh, in the rock, in the rock climbing um, space. It's this is intimidating going into a uh, indoor gym and trying routes that you've never tried before that you know you're not capable of hitting and you might have five to six people uh, you know 10 feet behind you specifically watching you try to hit this route but i promise you uh, you need to let that fear go and what i found is it's, it's it's just a story that you're telling yourself in your head oftentimes people aren't really worried about you they're not thinking about you they're they might even be in agreement they mean man that guy, uh, I, I, I admire him for trying something that's way outside his comfort level. Uh, you know, that could be seen. Or, you know, the people that, that truly might be snickering behind your back, screw them. Uh, I, think, I think a lot of that comes from their own insecurities, that, that they know what it feels like uh, to be trying something that they're uncomfortable with. And um, that's, that's kind of a bummer that, you know, that might be preventing them from, from moving forward from actually progressing in their skill set or, or trying something that they've always wanted to try before. That's, that's such a shame. So uh, the biggest thing you can do is, is, you know, let that fear go and just go for it. But I know that's easier said than done. My suggestion is to allow yourself to start small and to stay out of the public eye. You know, if you want to learn yoga, maybe it's not going to a public yoga class, but it's just finding a couple of classes on YouTube and practicing them by yourself in the comfort of your own living room until you get a little bit more comfortable in that space and then you can go to a class. You don't you don't have to take this giant leap or or you know put some of this like I said this this friction in between you and pursuing this interest or the skill that that you really want to learn. Um, if if you have some kind of fear then manage the fear. Don't don't just say, oh my gosh, I want to learn how to do yoga, but I just cannot go to yoga class because I'm too embarrassed. There's other ways to learn yoga without going to a yoga class. So that's all I have for you today. I, I hope you enjoyed this first monologue episode. I, I rambled a little bit here. Uh, I promise you I'm excited to, to get better at this kind of podcast format. I'd love any feedback that you have for me. I'm someone that's trying to learn and grow. I'm, I'm taking on this beginner's mindset with um, trying out this kind of format. I can't hide behind my guest uh, and allow my guest to provide all the value in this kind of um, situation. It, I'm kind of you know putting myself out here and really trying to learn something. So I hope that this episode inspired you to develop some curiosity within yourself and that you decide to take on learning a new skill today. You know, pick anything, go to that Google Doc. Um, you know, find something that, that interests you, go to Google or YouTube and uh, just start out with a simple phrase, how to learn X, Y, Z, and then just take it from there. So uh, I'll leave you with my final thoughts. I think um, for many of my, my listeners, we, we struggle with the, the concept of finding your passion. And I think pursuing skills 
um, and developing some areas of interest, I think, can help with this. So I wanted to leave you with this quote from the phenomenal author, Elizabeth Gilbert. If you haven't checked out some of her books, um, I, I love Big Magic. This is one of her nonfiction books, but I think it's, it's something that you should add to your reading list. But uh, she, quote, says, If you can let go of passion and follow your curiosity, your curiosity just might lead you to your passion. So I hope you enjoyed this episode today and go out there and develop some curiosity. Thank you. Hey, everybody. Thanks for listening. If you like this episode, make sure to subscribe, rate, and review. If this episode brought value to you, share it with a friend and show love on social. You can tag me at Justin Lee Peters. The link to the show notes is in the episode description and we'll include all the resources we talked about today. This episode was produced by Gabby Dimeke. I'm your host, Justin Peters. Thanks for tuning in and we'll see you next time in the sandbox.